אבון בשמיים
Oh, oh, oh. 
אבון בשמיים
yes, hello everyone. Thanks for being here. I see a number of you were here early and um, in communication. And uh, I was here early too, but I uh, somebody pointed out, um, forgot to turn the camera off or actually forgot to change the screen to the dead screen, to the opening screen. So a little embarrassing, but not too bad, I hope. And um, let me know with the um, chat stream if uh, there's something weird with the sound because I think there might be something weird with the sound. What I'm particularly concerned about is whether when I begin to speak, it th drops out before I begin or when I end the speaking, it drops out. Um, because I have a noise filter on and sometimes does that. Okay, so um, there's nothing. Oh, it's a great feast day. It's a great feast day, the feast of uh, Peter and Paul, Saints Peter and Paul, uh, June 29th, the day that they both, um, according to tradition, were martyred in Rome. Um, some accounts say it was the same year. Some accounts say it was the years a few years apart. So there, and um, and uh, I will give a little, you know, my 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 talk after the rosary will be on the martyrdoms of Saint Peter's saints Peter and Paul, and maybe even a little um, a little travelogue photographs. So anyway, um, I guess that's it. Um, yeah, I look overheated. I actually hope I'm not overheated. I, I think it's because I got a little sun yesterday. Maybe even got a little too much sun yesterday. Maybe I can do something with a filter, <laughs> filtering, tone, tone down the redness. Um, anyway, St. Michael. Okay. Thank you, Ruth. Um, might as well start with St. Michael to keep us out of trouble with everything else. Name of the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin and destruction of souls. Amen. And I guess, um, since we started, and we might as well just go into the, um, prayer more than might as well. Of course, it's the sensible thing to do. It's what we're here for. And um, I am going to slow down, slow down if I can figure out how to do it again. Boy, how can they, how can they change things? Yeah, am I changing things? Okay. Okay, I slowed down the chat stream uh, so that, um, well, not just so that you don't distract yourselves, but also so that I can um, use get communication from you on the over the chat stream because they were coming in too fast for me to be able to read it and do uh, the prayer. So, okay. Start with the Divine Mercy Chaplet. Go on to the Sorrowful Mysteries after the prayer for the conversion of the Jews and so forth. and um, And then I'll talk a little bit about the martyrdoms of saints... Peter and Paul, um, just in honor of their feast day. That's, by the way, why it's a joint feast day, is because the dates of their martyrdom uh, were supposed to be the same. So, find mercy in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You expire, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O font of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water, which gushed forth in the heart of Jesus, is font of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth in the heart of Jesus, is a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth in the heart of Jesus, is a font of mercy for us. I trust in you. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer Thee the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Thy dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of His sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of His sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of His sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer thee the body, blood, soul, and divinity of thy dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer thee the body, blood, soul, and divinity of thy dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. 
for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer thee the body, blood, soul, and divinity of thy dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Amen. Oh, I'm sorry. What have I done wrong? Never mind. Eternal Father, I offer thee the body, blood, soul, and divinity of thy dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us. In difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to thy most holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Saint Faustina, pray for us. Amen. 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 I think I lost consciousness for a moment there. Maybe a little iced coffee will help. Um. Anyway, thank you. Thank you for the lovely Divine Mercy Chaplet. And uh, we are going to go on to the Rosary, the Sorrowful Mysteries, with uh, Father Dolindo's 
sorrowful meditations. But first, we will have a prayer for the conversion of the Jews and an invocation of uh, St. Joan of Arc. So, I will go back. You know, I think pretty much all of these prayers for the conversion of the Jews were written by Jewish converts. Um, perhaps with the exception of the one from the Catholic Bravieri for the week of Christian unity, and I'll read that one now. O God, who manifests your mercy and compassion towards all peoples, have mercy upon the Jewish race from the outset, your chosen people. You selected them alone out of all the nations of the world to be the custodians of your sacred teachings. From them you raised up prophets and patriarchs to announce the coming of the Redeemer. You willed that your only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, should be a Jew according to the flesh, born of a Jewish maiden in the land of promise. Listen to the prayers we offer you today for the conversion of the Jewish people. Grant that they may come safely to a knowledge and love of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah foretold by their prophets, and that they may walk with us in the way of salvation. Amen. Okay, St. Joan of Arc. St. Joan of Arc, patron of France and patroness of our prayer group, we ask you now to fight this battle with us by prayer, just as you led your troops to victory in battle under the banner of Jesus and Mary. You who were filled with the Holy Spirit and chosen by God, help us this day with the favor that we are asking of you. As you save France from take over by a foreign dominant power, England, we ask you to save the United States from a takeover from a hostile foreign power. As you save France from a takeover by communism in 1947, we ask you to help save our country from a takeover by communism in our day. And finally, with respect to the entire world, the entire free world, we ask for your intercession and your prayers to save the entire world from a takeover by the One World Antichrist Great Reset Government. Grant us by your divine and powerful intercession the courage and strength we need to endure this constant fight and to persevere. O Saint Joan, help us to be victorious in the tasks and all the tasks that God presents to us. I thank you, and I ask for your continuing protection of God's people. St. Joan, pious daughter of the Church, pray for us. Amen. And now, we have the lovely interlude of the children singing. Of course, we have them singing because the Blessed Virgin Mary, when she appeared at Ile de Bouchard to... Um, ask for rosaries to be said to keep France, protect France from a communist takeover. She asked for the children to sing the Je vous salue Marie uh, before the rosary. And uh, that that was a visit was very successful. Um, France was saved from a communist takeover. So with that in mind, um, let us play that song. Whoops. Always something. Je vous salue, Marie, comblée de grâce. Le Seigneur est avec vous. Vous êtes bénie entre toutes. 
nous salue, Marie comblée de grâce, le Seigneur est avec vous, vous êtes bénie entre toutes les femmes, et Jésus, votre enfant, est béni. Sainte Marie, Mère de Dieu, priez pour nous, pauvres pécheurs, Well, I don't think anyone will complain that 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 was a little bit longer than one cycle through the song. Um, anyway, but uh, good. Okay. Well, we're on the right screen and uh, for the introductory prayers for the rosary, Sorrowful Mysteries. So let's hit it. Name the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I didn't mean anything, any disrespect, dear Blessed Virgin Mary, by saying, let's hit it. That was perhaps tactless. We come to you, really, with a veneer of lightheartedness, but really with all of our heart and all of our dedication and all of our consecration. We do this day after day in your honor and to unite ourselves with you. And I hope that you forgive a little playfulness stirred in. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. For an increase in faith, hope, and love. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, 
especially those most in need of thy mercy. The first sorrowful mystery, the agony in the garden. From Father Delindo, fulfill the divine will in the suffering of your life, and especially in the agony of your sensitive heart. Do not become disheartened in your life. Keep your eyes on your final destination, which is heaven. Do not become despondent, but bear all things with patience and spread peace around you. The first sorrowful mystery, the agony in the garden. The chant in the background is, of course, the um, lament of Jesus in Corsican. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. The second sorrowful mystery the scourging at the pillar.
from Father Delindo, Meditations, Jesus Speaking. As I was scourged for love of you, so you must bear your physical pains for love of me. Offer your suffering for those who seek pleasures of the flesh. Be holy in your suffering and give the example of your peace and your union with the divine will. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in thy mercy. The third sorrowful mystery, the crowning with thorns. From Father Delindo's meditation, Jesus speaking. I was crowned with thorns to expiate the faults of leaders and to restore to health poor lost minds. Pray to the wounds of my head to keep in sound health your mind and the ones who are dear to you, because every disorder of the conscience has its roots in disorder of the mind. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins. Save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. The fourth sorrowful mystery, Jesus carries the cross. From Father Delindo's meditation, Jesus speaking, I go on carrying my cross for love of you, and you follow me for love of me. You hesitate to carry the cross because your nature seeks joy. But how can you have joy if you don't carry the cross? Unite yourself to the divine will and bear your daily crosses with patience, courage, and submission. Live with patience, and you shall live in peace. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death amen hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death amen glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. The fifth sorrowful mystery, the crucifixion of Jesus. From Father Delindo's Meditations, Jesus speaking. Gaze on me, crucified, and all your pains will become sweeter. Don't be afraid, from my cross I open my arms of mercy to you, and I save you. Be at peace and join me at the foot of the cross, sacrificing yourself for me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, most holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ, O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life. Grant, we beseech thee, that meditating upon these mysteries of the Most Holy Rosary, the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and attain to what they promise. To the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother, the Word incarnate, despise not our petition, but in thy mercy hear and answer us. Amen. Amen, and thank you. And thank you. A little iced coffee might be in order. And um, let's see. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll stop the, uh, remove the delay on the chat stream. So there's no need for it anymore. So let's see. Okay. Okay. And, um, okay. So, um, I'm, I'm fading. Pray for me, but I did prepare some of a show on Peter and Paul. So, so I think I am going to give it a shot. Excuse me. Um, And uh, anyway, I think it's kind of neat that that um, they're celebrated together. That tradition has it that they were martyred on the same day. Let me find where my notes are here. And um, I want to just mention something that's kind of neat to me, but I'm not sure. Whoops. Oh, sorry about that. We had a minor earthquake here. Um, which is uh, interesting to me. 
which is when you look at, when you think of St. Peter and you think of St. Paul, isn't it more logical to think of St. Paul as the apostle to the Jews and St. Peter to the apostle to the Gentiles? I mean, St. Peter is the foundation of the church in Rome, full of Gentiles. It's not very Jewish, right? And St. Paul was the, you know, rabbinical student, r- rabbi who studied at the feet of Gamaliel and was the, you know, passionate about Judaism and the scholarly Jew. St. Peter was not scholarly, right? He was a fisherman. St. Paul knew all, knew Judaism inside and out. Wouldn't you think that St. Paul would be the apostle to the Jews and St. Peter to the Gentiles? But no, it was the other way around. So... I don't know where to go with that. <laughs> I just thought, I just thought, you know, I'll I'll confess something. I always think, I almost trip over the phrase Saint Paul, apostle to the Gentiles. I'm always surprised by it. So, why did they make the super super Jew the apostle to the Gentiles and the the um, unlettered fisherman the apostle to the Jews? You got me. But. I might as well start there. Um, St. Peter, I, you guys all know this. I'll, I'll read a short account of St. Peter if I have it here somewhere. Um, I'll start with St. Peter since since uh, he's the Pope, you know. I suppose he has priority. Um, if I can find my notes on St. Peter, uh, which I apparently can't. Um, This is all, all, uh, this is all St. Paul. This is all St. Paul. Oh, here's St. Peter. Okay, good. Okay. The great progress of the faith made in Rome by the miracles and preaching of the apostles was the cause of the persecution which Nero raised against the church. St. Ambrose tells us that the Christians entreated St. Peter to withdraw for a while because St. Nero, uh, St. Nero, Emperor Nero is after St. Peter. Now, um, this isn't, uh, this isn't, this isn't, okay. I'm I'm just going to wing it. I'm going to start by winging it. Okay. Um, St. Saint, Saint Peter and St. Paul obviously were martyred by the Romans and um, the Romans, uh, excuse, the Christians in Rome, well let, well, let me just back up a little bit. St. Peter was the apostle to the Jews and he was in Rome, not because Rome was full of Italian Catholics in those days, but because Rome was full of Jews in those days. Am I allowed to say just like Washington, D.C. and Hollywood are full of Jews in our day? Um, maybe. Excuse me. Maybe there's a little, a little... I don't know. Is that anti-Semitism or is that Jewish chauvinism? But, you know, that Rome was obviously the seat of the wealth and the power. And there were a lot of successful Jews. Like New York City, maybe. Or, or as... Um, as what was his name? Al Sharpton used to call it Jaime Town. Anyway, I'm, I'm not anti-Semitic. Anyway, so um, why why was there so much conflict? Well, what was going on, I guess, is a better place to start because I, I don't know where I'm going with this. Here's the story. You, all, you guys all know that there was a lot of a contention between the Christians in the Roman Empire and the Jews in the Roman Empire. And you may or may not know that um, the Jews actually complained about the Christians to the Roman authorities. And the Roman authorities were rather hostile to the Christians on their own. And the reason the Roman authorities were hostile to the Christians is because Christianity was a threat to the Roman Empire in part, it's not, nothing's all one thing, but um, because in Christianity, everybody's an equal, and slaves, the Christian church was, you know, welcoming slaves as much as it was welcoming royalty, 
And, um, you know, it's a little bit hard when a slave is a Christian and his owner is a Christian to keep him a slave. It was kind of a turning, overturning of the social order. And, um, and also, of course, it was spreading. So, uh, and also the Christians were not offering sacrifice to the pagan gods, which was a law that all everyone in under the Roman rule had to do. So you can see why the Roman authorities were not happy with the Christians. Now, the Jews, why were the Jews so upset about the Christians and wanted the Roman authorities to sort of persecute the Christians, let's say? I'm overstating this a little bit. I, I paint with broad brush strokes, so don't, you know, you have to adjust. Think of me, you know, Jackson Pollock or something, not, you know, not Rembrandt or something. So anyway, why were the Jews very opposed to the Christians? And the reason is because to the Romans, the Christians were Jews. Not surprisingly, right? Christ was a Jew and all of the early Christians were Jews, almost all. And of course, St. Paul and St. Peter were Jews. And so why was this a problem for the Jews in Rome? And the reason is that the Jews had special permission. They were the only ones under the Roman Empire who were allowed not to offer sacrifice to the pagan gods. They had, they had special privileges. I don't know how they got those special privileges. Maybe, maybe they were money lenders to the, to the Caesars. I don't know. Um, I'm not anti-Semitic, but maybe they were. Who knows? I don't. I don't know that history. But they had the special privilege of not having to offer sacrifice to the pagan gods. Now, you know they were they were a protected minority in Rome. Let's say now, if the Roman authorities wanted to come down like a ton of bricks on the Christians because they were overturning the social order then the Jews were afraid that in, in coming down on the Christians, the Roman authorities would come down on the Jews because they all looked the same. I mean, basically, the Christians were a division of Jews, and you can't expect the pagan authorities to make a distinction between a Jew who's a follower of this Christ guy and a Jew who isn't a follower of this Christ guy. So the Jews wanted to build as solid a brick wall as possible between them as real Jews and the Christian Jews who were bringing down all of this government heat. I hope that makes sense, but I, it's kind of important, it's important to me because um, if, you, if you look at the contention between the Jewish community and the Christ, early Christian community under the Roman Empire, um, you see a lot of hostility, and um, I don't like that hostility being interpreted in terms of anti-Semitism, that in other words, the Jews were just like really mean and loved to persecute Christians because they were really mean. They were protecting themselves by, by separating themselves from the Christians and by trying to take the side of the Romans against the Christians so that they would not be seen as being in the same pot as the Christians, so to speak. So I hope that makes sense. Um, but anyway, so so there was a lot of heat coming down on, on St. Peter and on the church in Rome. So I'll go back to this account. So um, St. Ambrose tells us that the Christians entreated St. Peter to withdraw for a while to protect himself. So he yielded and he made his escape by night but going out of the gate of the city, he met Jesus Christ on the way, on the road. There's a church built in that very spot where St. Peter met Jesus Christ as St. Peter was fleeing Rome to keep from being persecuted or actually crucified, as it turned out. And um, uh, so when uh, Jesus Christ met up, excuse me, when St. Peter met Jesus Christ, what did he say? He said, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus, who was coming in the opposite direction, so Jesus was coming towards Rome while St. Peter was leaving Rome, Christ answered, I am going to Rome to be crucified again. St. Peter got the hint and realized that um, if he didn't 
allow himself to be crucified in Rome, so to speak. You know, Jesus was going to Rome to be crucified again. So anyways, St. Peter got the hint. Whoops, this is all wrong. I'm on the wrong screen. Oh my goodness. There we go. Nothing so wrong having Mary up there anyway. Um, so anyway, that is that is um, uh, that. where are you going in Latin is quo vadis, quo vadis. And you may have heard of a mo an old movie, Quo Vadis, and a book, a historical novel, Quo Vadis. And it's about this time of history and Jesus meeting up with Peter fleeing Rome. Now, in my um, travelogue kind of um, incarnation, so to speak, I have some pictures for you, maybe. I meant to. Here we have the church. Whoops. How can I do this? I know I can do this somehow. Oh, I know why I can't do this. I'll, I'll do this in a second. Oh, boy. Okay. I'll wear something. Okay. Now I should be able to do this. This is, in fact, the church um, called Quo Vadis. Uh, and it's on the road outside of Rome. Um, I forgot the name of the road. Some of you, I, I mean, I know, actually. A lot of you probably know the name of the Rome uh, road. Let me, I'm, I'm just going to mess around a little bit here to try to, okay. So I can be here at the same time. There we go. Um, and I'll shrink this down so you can see the whole church. Um, but anyway, so that is the church built on the spot where on the road leaving Rome, where St. Peter met up with uh, our Lord. And in that church, there is, um, there is the following. There is a marble slab. Now, I must, must be honest that this marble slab is a copy of the marble slab which was there. And the um, marble slab that was there, that the church was supposedly built around, has been moved to another church. I forgot what church it's been moved to, but this is a um, this is a model of it, um, and it is supposed to be, or it is venerated as being the footprints of Jesus. Now, I will confess something. I will confess something. Um, you know, many of the things in the Holy Land, I, I don't want to say I swear to, but many of the relics in the Holy Land, I have a great deal of confidence in. Um, I have less confidence in these footsteps. There are other theories about, about um, what the origin of the footsteps were. And, um, and uh, yeah, I'm a little suspicious. But um, when I was there, of course, I, you know, I'm a pilgrimage bum. So when I was there, I uh, was not suspicious and I venerated the footsteps as I didn't even know they were only a model in those days. I thought they were the original, the original stone. So that is the story of Quo Vadis. Now I'll continue with the reading. Um, St. Peter readily understood this vision to be meant of himself, and taking it as a reproof of his cowardice, and a token that it was the will of God he should suffer, he returned to the city, and being taken, was put into the Mamertine prison with St. Paul. The two apostles remained there eight months, during which time they converted the captains of their guards with forty-seven others. Um, it is generally asserted that when they were condemned, they were both scourged before they were put to death, if St. Paul might have been exempted from the scourging on account of him being a Roman citizen, St. Peter certainly wasn't, and he would have been um, scourged before crucifixion, as one always was. Um, the tradition in Rome is that they were both led together out of the city by the Ostian Gate, and that they both were martyred together in the same field on the banks of the Tiber. Um, now, the um, uh, it's it's uh, the tradition. I mean, it's more than the tradition. Uh, Saint, uh, um, blah, 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 blah. 
uh, okay, let me read this so I'm not cheating. Um, St. Prudentius says that they both suffered together in the same field. Um, some say St. Peter suffered on the same day of the month, but a year before St. Paul. But Eusebius, St. Epiphanius, and others affirm that they suffered the same year on the 29th of June. That's today. That's why we have this feast today. St. Peter, when he came to the place of execution, requested that he might be crucified with his head downwards, saying that he was not worthy to suffer in the same manner as his master had died before him. Hence, all of the paintings, there are many, many, many famous paintings, and I just have a couple here, and I won't ask, I won't make a quiz out of who do the artist is. However, you can, <laughs> I'll make a quiz out of who the artist is if you quickly, um, some of you must know. Here's the first picture of St. Peter being crucified upside down. And um, so that's picture number one. If you if you tell me where the, uh, or rather who the artist is. And I'll give you picture number two of the crucifixion of, of uh, St. Peter upside down. There we go. And uh, both of these are super famous uh, Catholic artists. Uh, Ruth, I'm coming to St. Paul. <laughs> I'm coming to St. Paul and Trey Fontaine. Uh, Trey Fontana. So anyway, so anyway, this is uh, this is the second one. So you can tell me. Yes, the first one was Car Caravaggio. Um, so I'll. I'll pull that up here. This one was Caravaggio. So then the question is, who painted this? Okay. So um, that is probably all I will. Oh, no. One more thing about St. Peter. Now, this is used to be my favorite, um, my favorite uh, thing to do in Rome when I was there on pilgrimage probably true. It was my absolute favorite thing to do. And um, let me see if uh, if any of you, well, I, I shouldn't make everything a quiz. Yes, it's Michelangelo. Moises. As though Moises wouldn't know a Michelangelo when he saw one. But anyway, um, he can probably sketch it from memory or something. Okay. Uh, does anybody know, the thing is, I'm going to say it before you have a chance to say it. But does anybody know what you're looking at with that picture? I'll, um, I'll, uh, um, whoops. I'll, um, zoom in a little bit. Okay, that's probably all I should zoom in. Anyone know what that is? No, the second one was Michelangelo. Um, this is the Clementine Chapel um, under St. Peter's. In other words, the lower level of St. Peter's has a circular um, corridor. And I think it's 12 chapels radiating out from, radiating in. Actually, no, there are chapels radiating out and chapels radiating in. It's been a long time. And it used to be, it isn't anymore, but it used to be that priests who came to Rome could request one of these altars to have their little private mass when they were in Rome. And it used to be that um, if you lined up outside St. Peter's at like 6.30 in the morning, 6.40 in the morning, the guards would open up St. Peter's and you could go in and I would dart down stairs and I would... Um, basically hang out in this chapel waiting for a priest to come to celebrate mass. And I would, unless I was kicked out, basically, usually the priest, if the, if see the, the chapel only holds about six or eight people. Actually, that's not true. It has kneelers for about maybe eight people, but you can stand. So you don't really need one of the kneelers, but it only holds maybe about 12, 15 people. And the priest, if he came alone, would let you stay. And if he came with two other people, 
you know, you give him the kneelers, you can stay. If he came with 30 people or something, you'd have to leave. But most mornings I could stay. And what is super cool about this chapel is that behind the grill there over the altar, it, that is the tomb of St. Peter there. That is actually the real tomb of St. Peter. You can see there's a marble encasement. Those are the bones of St. Peter inside there. And it's actually as close as you can get to the tomb of St. Peter when you're in Rome, unless you go on what's called the Scavi on this archaeological um, tour where you go down actually into the dig and you, you also get close to the real tomb. Um, Nodge is asking, is that why they canceled Roy? They canceled the private masses, but before they canceled the private masses, with all the security stuff, they canceled the, you know, 7 a.m. entry of anybody into St. Peter's or 645 entry into St. Peter's. So for many years, you could not do that anymore. They, you know, when I used to do this, they didn't have metal detectors at St. Peter's. I mean, it was before all of the nonsense, all of the, you know, security stuff. Uh, then they got more and more security conscious and everybody had to be searched and you had to go through metal detectors and all of that stuff. And that you couldn't do at 645 in the morning to go down here. But anyway, I would be in seventh heaven. I would, um, uh, leaving that, leaving that mass, um, leaving that mass there right in front of the bones of St. Peter. I mean, I couldn't talk to tell the truth for 20 minutes after that mass. In other words, you know what I mean? I was in a, in, in two, in a state which was not conducive to talking. Anyway, um, so yeah, the tomb, uh, the tomb is behind the cross on the altar. I believe that vertical piece of wood is actually a part of the tomb believe that's right it was like the tomb in uh in jerusalem only this was before. i went to rome before I, I don't know how to put it but i was a rome pilgrimage bum before i was a, a jerusalem pilgrimage bum so that is um that and so um it's also by the way a very beautiful chapel but that's that's not so surprising because <laughs> because all of those things of the vatican are very beautiful chapels so there is the whole chapel so you can see basically the kind of the scale of it and the size of it. And um, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Um, I, I This is the Feast of St. Peter and Paul. So you guys, some of you may swear off me and never listen to me again because I'm going to give a, tell a joke or make up a joke. And here's the joke I'm going to make up. Recently, there was an event in this chapel. There was an earthquake which occurred. And it was thought that the earthquake which occurred was due to the body of St. Peter actually rolling over in the grave. And this is what was going on at the time of that, of that strange sound that people thought was an earthquake. Anyway, so I can't wait to see the chat stream to see um, who appreciated the joke and who was indignant at the joke. Anyway, that that is um, that is the most recent uh, bishop in white, so to speak, praying at the tomb of Saint Peter. Okay, uh, I better get that off there quick before before I get lynched. Um, so okay, so that's Saint Peter. Um. Anyway, uh, St. Peter, of course, was granted his request of being crucified upside down. And Father Paggi, whoever he is, um, <laughs> thank you. I know that every, everyone who would have been offended probably has long since stopped watching me. Uh, what's on the tablets on the right and left say, and in which language? You got me. Um, I'm, I'll take a wide, wild guess, and um, I think they probably say that the chapel was built by St. Clementine in such and such a year um, uh, in commemoration of this and that and the other thing. Their bronze plaques. Um, 
Anyway, Father Paggi, whoever he is, places the martyrdoms of both apostles in the year 65 on the 25th of June. Um, the, uh, the Quo Vadis Church, I'll go back to that. The Quo Vadis Church is um, southeast of Rome. It's about 800 meters, that's about 800 yards from the San Sebastian port, uh, door, gate, where the Via Ar Ardiantina branches off the Appian Way. So it's right off the Appian Way. Um, and that's where uh, St. Peter met um, Jesus. Uh, there's been a sanctuary on the spot since the 9th century. This church is from the 17th century. And... Um, um, there was an inscription above the front door of the church's facade, which used to say, Stop your walking, traveler, and enter this sacred temple, in which you will find the footprint of our Lord Jesus Christ when he met with St. Peter, who escaped from prison. Um, Pope Gregory XVI had this inscription removed in 1845. Actually, it was an advertise. It was a little bit of an advertisement. That's another story, and um, the genuine footprints. Well, the genuine footprints. The excuse me, I, I shouldn't be smug like that. But anyway, the footprints, which um, are thought to be the footprints of Jesus by some, were have been moved to the Basilica of Saint Sebastian outside the walls. So now I'm through with Saint Peter. Um, I hope he's not through with me. I need his prayers. So let me go to St. Paul, who's actually closer to my heart, because <laughs> I think of him as the apostle to the Jews. I mean, it's so stupid, isn't it? I think of St. Peter. St. Peter is, of course, you know, he's, he's an Italian Catholic. St. Paul is the Jew. Anyway, so... Um, uh, so let me, let me find the right place. Uh, to start with St. Paul. Okay. Okay. I have a lot on St. Paul. Um, I, I have a, another confession to make. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm actually, uh, I, I hope that none of you, um, I don't know how to put it. Don't take me as a model of anything. Um, I did not remember. I actually remember this morning June, June 29th, that's a big, that's kind of some kind of feast day, isn't it? But I actually didn't remember which until I went to Mass this morning. It turned out to be a very beautiful Mass. And uh, the priest chanted and stuff. And, um, of course, I, that's the, when I realized it was the Feast of St. Peter and Paul. So I, I hurriedly, hurried, hurriedly uh, threw together this show when I got home from Mass. Kathy D., you're right. St. Paul is officially the Apostle to the Gentiles. He calls himself the Apostle to the Gentiles, but he consistently um, always first went to the Jews because Jesus first went to the Jews, and the Jews were the chosen people. So he was traveling around. He wanted to evangelize everybody, but whenever he arrived in a place, he would first go to the Jews. They would try to kill him or have him executed or give him 39 lashes. And then he would go to the Gentiles time after time after time. Another reason I think of him as the apostle to the Gentiles, but he, excuse me, as the apostle to the Jews. He always started with the Jews. Anyway, I'm just going to read um, this um, account. I think it's, is it from Butler's? Um, um, forgive me for pulling this up because I, no, I, I, Back to me. Okay, no distance of nations could confine the ardor of this apostle zeal. This is St. Paul. From the east, he returned again to Rome. We know he was traveling all over, right, and going to the east. We know that from his letters. Um, St. Athanasian, Athanasius tells us that God had made known to him by revelation, that is known to St. Paul, that he should suffer martyrdom in Rome, whereupon, instead of Going in the opposite direction, he with joy hastened to Rome. Uh, Saint 
Luke tells us that St. Paul found many Christians in Rome upon his first coming there. St. Peter had begun to preach there probably about 16 years earlier, before the arrival of St. Paul. And uh, Claudius banished the Jews out of Rome for the tumults raised by them concerning Christ. So you see, this is an example of that. The emperor exiled the Jews from Rome because of the brouhaha, before, because of the disorder that was being caused by the Christians. Now, granted, some of that disorder might have been caused by the non-Christian Jews, you know, rioting against the Christian Jews, um, as well as being caused by the Christian Jews um, being a thorn in the side. The, the mere fact that Christian Jews asserted the privilege of not offering sacrifice, the Jewish privilege of not offering sacrifice. Think of how that felt to the Jewish Jews. I mean, so if the Roman government allowed the Christian Jews to not offer sacrifice because they had the same right as the Jewish Jews because they were really Jews, you see the problem? We still have the same problem today. Um, uh, we have the same problem today. Um, whenever... For instance, when I spoke in St. Louis, um, the Jewish rabbis, anyway, there were, the Jewish rabbis went to the bishop of St. Louis at the time. It was not uh, Cardinal Burke, who was very much on my side. It was another bishop that I won't name, and complained, basically, that I was calling, you know, I was calling myself a Jew, but I can't be a Jew because I'm a Catholic. I mean, according to Jews, you can't be a Jew and believe in Jesus. They also object to, you know, to um, the term Messianic Jews, and they object to the term Jews for Jesus and so forth. So they were doing that already 2,000 years ago. Anyway, so Claudius banished the Jews out of Rome because of the tumults caused, raised by them concerning Christ. Great numbers among these many illustrious persons had embraced Christianity, when Nero began the first general persecution of the church. St. Paul converted, among others, a beloved concubine of Nero, and she thereupon changed the course of her life, forsook the court, and served God in great sobriety and virtue, which provoked the tyrant and was the first occasion of St. Paul's imprisonment. This we see over and over again, right, in the story of the saints. I, I don't remember them all offhand, you know, St. Ignatius, St. Philip Neri, Neri, yes, St. Philip Neri, um, I think St. Um, uh, St. John Bosco, that um, they would get in trouble with the rulers because they, or, or lords, powerful people, because they would convert their concubines or whatever you want to call them, their girlfriends, and then they would, you know, to kill them. I mean, the, the leader, whatever, you know, the person who was deprived of his favorite concubine would try to kill them. This again, here we're talking, you know, started 2000 years ago and never stopped. Anyway, so that was the first occasion of St. Paul's imprisonment. And um, then um, uh, during his second imprisonment, uh, I'm skipping some of this, um, he in which uh, he wrote to uh, his letter to his letter to the Ephesians, in which he takes the title of prisoner of Jesus Christ as that which is of all others the most honorable possible title. As Saint Chrysostom writes about this, to be a prisoner for Christ is a title more illustrious and more glorious than to be an apostle, a doctor, or an evangelist. This is truly a great dignity. We may get this dignity in the near future, boys and girls, so listen closely. This is truly a great dignity, far beyond that of any kingdom or consulate. One who loves Christ would rather be in chains for his sake than be in heaven. No glittering diadem so adorns the head as a chain born for Christ. Were the choice offered me either of heaven or of this chain, I would take the chain. If I might have stood with the angels above, near the throne of God, or bound in prison with Paul, I should have preferred the dungeon. 
Nothing is more happy or more glorious than to wear this chain. I do not call Paul so happy for having been taken up in a rapture into paradise as that he bore this chain. I do not call Paul so happy. Oops. Had you rather have been in the angel loosing Paul or Peter in chains? Excuse me. Had you rather have been the angel loosing Peter or Peter in chains? I would rather have been Peter. The gift of chains is something greater than to stop the sun, to move the world, or to command the devils. Wow, okay. So anyway, um, uh, so there's there we left St. Paul in prison there. That's where we got into that lovely celebration. At length, the happy term of his labors and dangers approach, and St. Paul beheld with, great, with joy the great moment in which Christ called him to his glory. The Holy Ghost had discovered him the day and the hour long before his martyrdom happened in the year 65 on the 29th of June. St. Paul was beheaded. His dignity as a Roman citizen did not allow him to be crucified. Um, it seems that Nero himself was present at his beheading. Um, his head is kept in the church of St. John Lateran, but his body lies with St. Peter's half in the Vatican and half in his own church. I guess we get cut up if we're saints when we die. Um, of course, they're all over the place in relics, right? His chains were also preserved in Rome. And St. Chrysostom, who earnestly desired to travel to Rome that he might salute them, says they made the devils tremble and were reverenced by the angels. Men have a greater respect for the tomb of this apostle, St. Paul, than they ever had for any living prince that had reigned in Rome. It is enclosed in a magnificent church built by Constantine the Great. Um, the palaces of kings and princes have nothing so great or admirable. Here people come from all parts of the world with wonderful piety and zeal to implore the succor and intercession of this apostle. Even emperors humbly prostrate themselves before his tomb in St. Paul outside the walls. Now, final account of his martyrdom. Um, as Ruth knows very well, um, he was beheaded, and the account is, the story is, the legend is, however the pious opinion is, whatever you want to call it, it's not dogma, is that when his head was cut off, it bounced three times, and at each of the spots where it bounced, a, a spring miraculously appeared, fountain, and that spot is called Three Fountains, and it's outside of Rome. I don't remember exactly how far. I'd say it's probably about eight miles outside of Rome. Ruth probably knows. Very hard to get to by public transportation, I can tell you that. It took me half a day. But anyway, and getting lost and stuff. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. And of course, there's a church built there. So let's go visit that church. Um, okay. Um, what's the right way to do this? I'll be here in a moment. Be back in a moment. Figure out the best. Um, okay. Kind of take me a moment, a little tour here. Where did I, where did I do all the other stuff? Hmm. Huh. Okay. I don't know. Okay, so I'll just do a new one. Okay. And uh, be here in a second. See. Paste. And okay, let's go to that church now. Uh, here it is. Yes, I should do. Okay, there we have it. Oh, okay, I guess. Anyway, here, here it is. It's, um, uh, it's called, do, 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 do. Uh, it's called, uh, oh, it's, it's, um, Cistercian. It's a Cistercian Abbey. So it's the Three Fountains Abbey, I believe is the name of it. 
there was a church-approved apparition of the Blessed Virgin Mary in, I think, the 1950s, right across the street, the Virgin of the Revelation. And if this was a half an hour earlier, I was going to tell the story of the Virgin of the Revelation. As a matter of fact, I won't tell the story. I won't do it justice, but I'll... Um, Okay, so this is one side of the road, and it's uh, the Three Fountains Abbey. And there is an altar there. Let me um, see if I can pull up the altar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here's the altar. Um, I'll have to make that bigger, of course. So there's the altar. And um, as you can see, the... Um, uh, in the altar, there is a sculpture of the head of St. Paul, only the head of St. Paul. Here's kind of a close-up on just the head of St. Paul there in the altar there. There you see it. Um, so that's a little tour. I, I'm trying to see. I don't think I have an interior picture of the church, but it's actually, um, if I'm allowed to say so, not a terribly... Um, uh, dramatic interior. It's a little bit... Uh, penitential, actually, because uh, I think the Cistercians are not big on very glamorous uh, churches. And, um, okay, and right across the street, um, oh, come on, I thought I had a picture of the, of the um, stones there, of the floor. I don't, I don't, I meant to, I'm sorry. Um, the, uh, the, in the floor there, there's, there are three plaques that are over. The springs have been uh, closed up, sealed up, um, recently, 20th century, by a pope because uh, people were drinking the water and the water wasn't sanitary. But there are plaques there for the three stones. I'll, I'll, I'll zoom out there. Um, oops. Here we go. I should zoom out there. Oh, no, that's still that. So what I really should do is go back to the church, I suppose. Right across the street, there is a park. And in the park, there I'm, I am telling the story of the Revelation, uh, the Virgin of the Revelation, as it turns out. In the park, there is this little grotto. And in the grotto, the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared. And um, she said that the dirt in the grotto would be like the water in Lourdes, and that people who collected the dirt, you know, and applied it, there, you know, would get healings and, and miracles and stuff. Needless to say, I've been there. I went there. Somewhere I have a vial of the dirt that I collected, but I'll probably never find it again. And, um, so I will, oh, here, um, yeah. I, anyway, I don't have a picture of the Three fountains. Anyway, back to the Virgin of the Revelation. I'll tell the story super quick. Uh, 1947. 1947 is also the same year that uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared in um, Ile de Bouchard in France. And actually, this is very similar because she appeared in Ile de Bouchard because France was about to undergo a communist uh, takeover, communist coup. And um, she appeared to stop it. And in 1947, she appeared to the super mason. Um, his name was Bruno Fornacciola. He was a railway railway worker. And he was, uh, he was a fallen away Catholic, but he was passionate against the church. And he spent all, I mean, he did nothing but, you know, write pamphlets, horrible blasphemies against the Blessed Virgin Mary attacking the Catholic faith, attacking the church, trying to get everybody to be, you know, an atheist and anti-Catholic and a Freemason and so forth. Actually, I said atheist, but uh, I, there's some story that he actually was a, um, you know, had become a Seventh-day Adventist or some kind of weird, excuse me, you know, semi-Christian um, form of Protestantism. Uh, anyway, he was going to a park with his three uh, sons to uh, for them to play soccer. Um, the They couldn't get to the... Um, they missed the train going to the park they were planning to go to. So instead, they went to the park across the street from Trey Frontena. 
um, when the kids were playing soccer, I'm, I'm, um, flying by the seat of my pants here. So I'm telling the story from my memory. So, uh, I have some notes in front of me, but I'm, it's a mixture of the two. So I may get a little bit, a little bit confused here, but anyway, so his kids are playing soccer, uh, his three, they're kicking around a soccer ball. He is, um, lying on the grass, actually writing a anti-church pamphlet. Because that's what he did. And then I guess he would have them printed or mimeographed and plastered all over the place. So he's writing one of these Masonic anti-church screeds against the Blessed Virgin Mary, literally. And the other thing is that the place, the park, was actually where um, people would have assignations. I'm trying to say this politely. But, you know, it was like a lover's lane, so to speak. And so there was a lot of sin that took place in that park also. So that's where he's like lying on the grass, writing his blasphemous screed against the Blessed Virgin Mary while his kids are kicking around a soccer ball. And um, one of the, the kids kicks the soccer ball and it disappears into a cave. And the child, the children were, what, uh, 10, 7, and 4, um, asked his father to go fetch the soccer ball. So he goes into the cave. And let me read what happened. Uh, Bruno put aside his notes, the notes for the, you know, pamphlet he was writing, and joined in the search for the soccer ball, only to find his youngest son, the four-year-old, kneeling at the entrance to a dark cave. The boy's hands were folded in the attitude of prayer, as though in ecstasy, as he repeated, beautiful lady, beautiful lady, as though he were addressing a living person. Bruno was surprised, that's the father's name, of course, then uneasy and finally seized by terror. He could see nothing in the cave. What, would he, what was he to make of his son's strange behavior? Excitedly, he turned to Isola and Carlo, those are the older children, for an explanation. Um, within seconds, they also fell to their knees and joined their hands in prayer, enraptured by the same vision. Bruno was dumbfounded. Then he heard all three of his children cry out together, Beautiful lady. He tried to move each child, but they were as if glued to the ground. He was terrified. Suddenly, Bruno was also overcome by the strange mystical experience. His eyes were filled with intense light for a moment, and everything disappeared. His children and the cave. He felt himself becoming weightless, ethereal, as though his spirit had been freed of his body. When he regained his sight, Bruno saw in the cave a woman of indescribable beauty and clothed in radiant white. Her black hair was surrounded by a halo of brilliant golden light. Her dress was gathered by a rose-colored sash, and over her so shoulders she wore a striking green mantle. Her, at her bare feet lay a black cloth which had a smashed crucifix on it. Her expression was one of motherly kindness, kindness, although clouded by sadness at time. In her right hand she held, resting on her breast, a small gray book. Her hands were crossed at her breast, but she unfolded them once to point to the broken pieces of the crucifix. Um, when the Blessed Virgin identified herself to Bruno, she did so with two profound truths. The first was of a general nature. I am the one that is of the Divine Trinity. The second was, I am the Virgin of the Revelation. Then the Virgin of the Revelation addressed herself directly to Bruno. You persecute me. Remember, she's pointing down at the broken crucifix at her feet. You persecute me. Enough of it now. Enter into the true fold, God's kingdom on earth. The nine first Fridays of the Sacred Heart have saved you. You must be like the flowers which your daughter picked. They make no protest. They are silent and do not rebel. With this dirt of sin, I shall perform miracles for the conversion of unbelievers. She revealed to Bruno the sad condition of his soul. At once all his arguments and prejudices against the church fell apart, and he saw before him the way to salvation, the Roman Catholic Church. At that point, the Virgin of the Revelation taught him the sure, sure means 
of salvation for him and for all mankind, which is prayer, and in particular the daily recitation of the Holy Rosary. Pray much and recite the Rosary for the conversion of sinners, of unbelievers, and of all Christians. To those souls who would heed her message, the Virgin promised great favors from heaven, quote, In this place of sin, I shall perform wonderful miracles for the conversion of unbelievers. True to Mary's promise, the dirt from the Grotto of Tre Fontaine, which formerly had seen great immorality, has proven to be miraculous. Like the waters of the Lourdes, it continues to work wonders for the welfare of both bodies and souls. So many that no one disputes that these graces have been received through the intercession of the Virgin of Revelation. And finally, um, I just want to add, since I'm such a loyal son of the Church, despite appearances to the contrary, that this is a Church-approved apparition. Um, not that all apparitions that aren't Church-approved are not true, but all that are Church-approved are true. And the Virgin of the Revelation is Church-approved. I believe it was approved by Pius XII. And um, anyway, what is the other Church-approved apparition of the Blessed Virgin Mary? This one is not technically in Rome, because it's outside of Rome. But what is the other Church-approved apparition of Mary in the neighborhood, in Rome? Anyone know? Do I see any hands out there? Yes, you in the front row. Of course, it's uh, Alphonse Radisbone, a converted Jew in the Church of San Andrea della Frata. So we have an apparition of the Blessed Virgin Mary in Rome to a very anti-Catholic Jew, and an apparition of the Blessed Virgin Mary right outside of Rome to a very anti-Catholic, fallen away Catholic Mason. So there you have it. That's it. That's all I have for you today. So anyway, um, this is interesting. It surprised me. I didn't know I was going to do this. And um, you know what I'll do? I'm sure everyone will love this. I will, well, I shouldn't say that, but I will leave the Virgin of the Revelation up here. And I will uh, have the children sing. Same year, right? 1947. Um, let me, uh, it's going to take a little doing, but I'm going to put up the um, Je vous salue Marie. And, um, and uh, associated, uh, okay, sorry. It, it, that ah was just for getting confused here. There we go. And um, properties and loop. Okay. Okay, so let's see what happens. Oops. Okay, so with that, I'll be going. I think I'll probably do my, my fade out wave. And uh, so there you have it. You have a little combined show on the martyrdom of St. Peter, the martyrdom of St. Paul, the fight, the quarrel between Jews and uh, non Christian Jews and Christian Jews in Rome. In the Virgin of the Revelation in 1947. So, okay. Maybe see you tomorrow. Certainly see you either tomorrow or the next day. I might actually only see you on Thursday. Just, you know what I mean. I just post them on Facebook and on, on the YouTube thing. And I actually usually don't know until the morning. So that's why I can't give you good advance notes. Bye for now. And, oh, the music, that's what you want. Like those kids better than you like me. Je vous salue, Marie, comblée de grâce, le Seigneur.